for legal reasons and so Mickey Mouse doesn't blow off my kneecaps, the following video is a joke. I make absolutely no apologies for what you're about to see. So enjoy. Oh, and a huge thank you for Skillshare for sponsoring this. The first thousand subscribers click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Hello and welcome everyone to this incredible opening ceremony of the Disney First Gay Character Olympics. It is truly an honour to be here and to witness this coming together of such iconic figures in cinematic history. We've reached the athlete parade portion of this evening, which I don't know about you, Mickey, but it's my favourite part of the whole game. Absolutely, Minnie. This is what these games are all about. Seeing them all here together, it really cements just how far we've come. And how far we still have to go. <laughs> Uh, oh, and here, look, it looks like our first characters are coming out to start the parade. Now, this year they're coming out in chronological order, is that right? Yes, it is. So you'll have to wait to see the latest first gay character. I know you're keen to get a glimpse of the hugely effete, very camp and very funny new character from 2021's Jungle Cruise, but you'll just have to wait. Now, these first characters that we can see coming out now aren't actually competitors. Oh, you are right. No, they didn't technically qualify. These are our queer coded characters. Well, that is incredible. The veterans, they really pioneered these games. We truly have them to thank for being here tonight. Even though they might not be competing, it is such a display of sportsmanship from our host nation of Tokyo Disney World to have them lead the parade today. It's wall-to-wall -wall queer coded villains down there. Leading the pack is Ursula the Sea Witch. An icon, of course, based her own look and vibe off the drag queen, Divine, an absolutely classic example of the kind of queer coded character we hoped to see in this veteran section. Oh, I see Hades, flaming as always. And Scar is here too. He's waving to the crowd and his signature bent wrist, one claw toe at a time, and they are loving it. And alongside him, of course, Radcliffe in a glittering golden cloak carrying his little dog, Percy. Now, for everyone at home, if you haven't seen the Instagram account that Radcliffe has made for Percy, you are missing out. A highlight from this year for me, it is so adorable. And speaking of adorable, oh my goodness, I almost didn't see them behind this main pack of villains, but that is those two lesbian geese from the Aristocats. Twin sisters, Abigail and Amelia, two cottagecore lesbians if ever I saw them. Lovely inclusion. And is that, yes, I think it is. What a treat for everyone here tonight. From the 2002 direct-to-video sequel to Hunchback of Notre Dame, it is the classic tale of Gargoyle meets Goat, Hugo and Charlie. Mm. And look, they're doing their signature move. Hugo is giving Charlie a flower and yes, Charlie is eating it out of his hand and giving him a Big lick to the face in return. Both of them batting their eyelashes and swooning over each other. The crowd is loving that and so are we. Oh, oh, here's our first of the competing athletes. Fresh from 2013's smash hit Frozen and their family run business in the snowy mountains, it's Oaken and his ambiguous family members waving from the sauna in that one frame of the movie. Is that his husband, his brother, his cousin, his son? We'll never know. We never will. Now's a good time to go over the, uh, the quintessential qualifying criteria that these athlete characters have had to fulfill to be part of these games. Indeed. Now, the general public at home might be wondering, how can there be more than one first gay Disney character? That's understandable, Mickey, because first, in all other contexts, has a very singular meaning. It does. Okay, so to qualify for a first gay Disney character, there has to be some kind of big social media ruckus around you, or Disney themselves, or the filmmakers involved, need to claim that you are gay representation, but it also has to be a bit disappointing. So the next time such a character occurs, the process can start all over again. So examples might be ambiguous representation like good old Oaken we just mentioned. It might also be a, a fleeting moment in the background, a side character who just seems a little bit gay, but it's never confirmed in the movie itself. An ambiguous gayish scene, which is easily removed for the homophobic global markets. 
not using the word gay or instead leaning heavily on euphemism or relying on nothing but stereotypes to suggest being gay at all. So, for example, this next athlete delegation is jumping ahead three years to 2016. It's those two lesbians from the background of the Finding Dory movie. Yes, the filmmakers have actually commented on this question of if they are gay and they said there is no right or wrong answer. A beautiful cop out answer there. These two lesbians, all straight friends, yes, all, all straight friends, they qualified in a very strong position with that kind of endorsement from their creators. And oh, right behind them, Bucky and Prong. Prong? Was that? Yes, it's the two random gazelles from 2016's Zootopia or Zootropolis, depending on where you're from. The film itself really gives no indication that they're gay, but it was eventually confirmed that the two are in fact a married couple, uh, so that Disney.Fandom.com does now say that they are the first LGBT characters in Disney animated history. Of course, of course, Pucky and- Bucky. Sorry, yes, Bucky and Pronk. Oh, and as a little nod to the role that made them first Disney gay royalty, they've bought along brown paper bags full of groceries, very in the spirit of these celebrations. Sorry to interrupt Minnie, but following behind them is someone I'm personally very excited to see. Entering the dance category, which is new this year, it's Le Fou from the 2017 live action Beauty and the Beast. Yes, there he is with his dance partner now. We don't actually have a name for his partner, but um, I am told that we do have an image of them from a training session. That, yep, there they are. I would say that they're a wonderful couple, but unfortunately, I don't actually know if that's true or not. But they won't let that stop them. Absolutely not, Mickey. These competitors never let things like a lack of name, plot or meaningful representation stop them. Now, in a genius move from the filmmakers that really made us pay attention to these two in the lead up to their big reveal, there was reported to be an exclusively gay moment in the movie. Now, one of the key aspects of these characters is leaving the audience confused and or disappointed. So the team behind the characters really went the extra mile here. This, I believe, brings us on to the 2019 athletes. 2019, a particularly good year for the sport. You know what they say, 2019, year of the queen. They do, they do. Uh, and at the front of this group are those lesbians from the background of Toy Story 4. Not to be mistaken for those lesbians from the background of Finding Dory. Exactly. Now, these are different background lesbian mums. We're still waiting to hear anything about them except that they made angry conservatives boycott the movie over a blink and you'll miss it scene that I actually struggled to find high quality images of for this coverage. Oh, and they brought their little one along for the celebration because if, if there's one thing we know about these lesbian mums, it's that they have a child. Now, second to last in our 2019 section is a character I have listed as unnamed Joe Russo cameo from Avengers Endgame. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a controversial addition to the lineup, is it not? Yes, unnamed Joe Russo cameo from Avengers Endgame is here on a technicality because he wasn't part of a Walt Disney Pictures, Disney Animation or Pixar Animation movie, but Disney does own Marvel, so he has been allowed to attend as a reserve team member. He does tick a lot of boxes. Such a shame about it being a Marvel movie. Oh, absolutely. He's unnamed. He's only in one scene that could easily be cut. So everything lining up so well for him in, in all other aspects. Still, there's no shame in being a reserve team member. Well, we don't wish ill on any other competitors, but if the worst should happen, unnamed Yoruso cameo from Avengers Endgame is, I'm told, ready to step in. Now, the same must be true for these next two athletes. Oh, indeed. It's the same thing as unnamed Joe Russo cameo from Avengers Endgame. These next two are the lesbian couple in the background of the last Star Wars movie. Again, Disney owned Star Wars, so they just slipped in there as reserves. Now, the director, J.J. Abrams, he really pushed for their inclusion as major athletes in these games. He said in an interview, in the case of the LGBTQ plus community, it was important to me that people who went to see this movie Felt like they were being represented in the film. I will say I'm giving away nothing about what happens in the movie, but I did just say what I just said. Oh, a brilliant hype man for those two background lesbians. The best a gay Disney character could ask for. Just a shame again, it's a Star Wars movie instead. Whoop whoop, it's the sound of the police, everyone. I see our first 2020 contender. It's the cop from Onward. Oh, if I know anything about gay people, Mickey, is that they have a long and loving relationship with law enforcement. That's true, Minnie. 
We have a whole line from the officer about her girlfriend's kid. Is her girlfriend here tonight? I couldn't tell you, Minnie. None of us know anything about her, including what she looks like. Well, if looks are your thing, swing your eyeballs over to our second to last competitor. It's Artie from Cruella. I have another quote here from the actor who plays Artie. It depends on who you're asking, I suppose. But for me, yes, it's official. He's queer. But we don't see him falling in love. There's no social aspect to the character. It's not beating you on the head with a stick. Depends who you're asking. I love it. Giving us something and also technically giving us nothing. Oh, and he's waving at Cruella, who's joined her villain compatriots. That is lovely to see. And finally, oh, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. 2021's entry into the gay Disney games. Straight comedian Jack Whitehall as very camp gay character McGregor from the Jungle Cruise movie. Like so many of our competitors tonight, he's brought a little nod to the role that got him here. A comically large number of trunks full of wardrobe changes. If there's one thing I know about gay men, it's that they're all foppish snobs who can't go anywhere without their pretty clothes. And this really is a fantastic way to round up the ceremony. He has it all. Tragic homophobic backstory that's a side note to the straight lead characters. No love interest or on-screen gayness. They never use the word gay or even say he's interested in men specifically. Instead going with the inspired phrasing. His interests lie elsewhere and his family didn't approve of who he loved. And all of that in one easy, removable scene for the homophobic global markets that was shot in a way that makes it seem like it was designed entirely for that purpose. And of course, the slight irony in so many people calling him the first openly gay Disney character, well, he apparently has to hide it and be ashamed that he's gay at all. Wow. An incredible lineup this year. Absolutely brilliant. Well, Thank you for joining us for what will almost certainly not be the last first gay Disney character celebration. Well, thanks once again to returning sponsor Skillshare. In what is now a tradition in these videos, I will be telling you what Skillshare classes I think the gay characters that I talked about in this video would take if they had a membership or, you know, a free one month trial link in the description. So this month I took Umber Ahmed's class, Baking Basics, Make Perfect Pastries Every Time, which showed me how to make this delicious focaccia that is in front of our very eyes. It was the perfect mix of practical instructions and creative ideas for future baking projects. And it's not just baking. There are classes on everything from poetry and music to photography and animation. Whatever your experience or creative interests, they'll have classes to suit your skill level. For example, um, Artie Francuela might want to take an advanced class on fashion, like this one on nailing your brand packaging. Buckingham Pronk would do well in a, um, a cooking class, I guess, based on the fact that they had groceries in that one scene they were in. Oaken might find a class on knitting useful with how cold it is where he is. And I guess the multiple background nameless lesbians could take this class on building believable characters and like apply it to themselves I guess. Skillshare is designed to give you the best learning experience so there are no ads you can watch on the go with the app and they are always launching new premium classes. They also now offer live classes with popular teachers that you can watch in real time so you can get inspired alongside other members. If you're looking to try new things or dig deeper into your current interests then Skillshare is a great place to connect with the support of fellow creatives and find a community of encouragement, communication and inspiration. Uh, and as a special treat for finishing this whole video you get some Focaccia ASMR with my new microphone. Can you tell I don't understand ASMR? I wonder if we can hear bread tearing, hang on. So the reason I'm wearing sunglasses in this video is twofold. One, I accidentally broke my second pair of glasses that I was going to wear for this video. Um, and two, this shirt and these glasses is what I wore for the Unhinged Luca video. And I am really keen on creating a chaotic Rowan Unhinged Lesbian cinematic universe. Um, so we'll see if I continue with that. Gosh, the catcher is so good. Okay. I think that's everything. <laughs>